Hey everybody, this is Steve Monday, Chief Forecaster with Rowan County Weather, and welcome to another edition of the Rowan County Weather Podcast. Today, our guest will be Seda Troutman, who is the Downtown Development Director for the City of Salisbury. We're going to have her on in just one moment, but first, before we do that, let's go ahead and take time to thank the advertising partner that helped helps to make the Rowan County Weather Podcast possible. That's William Ryan Enterprises Incorporated. You see their ad here on the screen now. You can give them a call at the number you see listed there or scan that QR code to be taken to their Facebook page where you can see photos and videos of current previous jobs that they are doing or have done. And they're there to help you if you're wanting to do a custom home build, remodel, or renovation. These are the guys you want to have help you get it done. For more details, again, give them a call or scan that QR code you see here on your screen. Now, without further ado, Let's go ahead and welcome our guest today, Seda Troutman, the Downtown Development Director for the City of Salisbury. Joining us now on the podcast, Seda Troutman, who is the Downtown Director of Development for the City of Salisbury. Seda, welcome aboard with us. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you on with us. So before we get started, Seda, go ahead and just tell everyone a little bit about yourself. We'll get into your role in just a moment, but uh, just tell folks about Seda Troutman, the person for now. Yeah, so I am not a Rowan County native, but love Rowan County um, like it's the home it is to me. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, and after I um, graduated from college, moved down to the Outer Banks and lived the beach life for a while, lived in the mountains for a little bit, um, went down to Charleston for graduate school. I got a master's in historic preservation, actually. And shortly after, had a great job opportunity in Salisbury. My husband is from Rowan County. Um, he grew up in East Rowan. So uh, we had the opportunity to move back to his hometown. And um, we've loved every second of it. We did that in 2019. Can't imagine living anywhere else. Um, and we're really lucky to be here in Salisbury. That certainly says a lot for Rowan County, considering the places you just mentioned you have, Liz. <laughs> it is hysterical. Everyone says, um, oh, you moved here from Charleston. You must hate it. You must want to go back. I'm like, absolutely not. I make that I make that move every time I get asked, love Charleston to visit. It's beautiful. It's beachy. It's historic. It's it's fun. Um, but it is, is certainly not home. And it's a little bigger, a little more expensive. Um, and you're fighting tourists everywhere you go down there. <laughs> Definitely all year long. And, you know, it's funny because we, we feel hot here right now, but I don't think folks realize just how hot Charleston can get. <laughs> oh, it is. Um, the very first year I lived in Charleston, it was super weird. They got like six inches of snow and super cold period. Literally the city was shut down. They had to bring in wow. snow plows from, um, the Western side of the state because they had no snow plows there. And I was like, oh, okay, Charleston's not summer hit. And, oh, yeah, you just avoid going outside. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I got to ask you, just because you brought up Charleston, it's one of my favorite shows, one of my wife's favorite shows, Southern Charm in Charleston. Did you ever see any of those folks running around town? Oh, yes. They, uh, <laughs> especially Shet, they are, they're out and about, and they love to um, kind of, Definitely take pictures with fans, but they are they are really out and about. That is not just all staged. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Well, tell us a little bit about the role that you have now with the city of Salisbury. Yeah, I was really fortunate to move here. Um, I actually had the chance to work with Historic Salisbury Foundation. Great time, great organization. And after about two and a half years with them, um, I moved into my role with the city where I'm the, as you said, I'm the um, downtown director for development. And what we focus on in our department is um, bolstering our downtown here in Salisbury. And so that looks a few different ways. Um, we do that making sure that the design of our downtown stays historic, that it stays um, aesthetically pleasing, that it's clean, um, the buildings are up to code. And so we do, we assist other city departments with things like that. Um, we do a lot of, uh, promotions. So I have a fantastic event coordinator, LaToya Price, who helps plan more than 10 events a year in our downtown. And then we assist Parks and Recreation Department with other events. Um, and we like to coordinate with our downtown businesses on events too. So would love to get into some of those that we have coming up later on. And then the other part that we do is economic vitality. And 
that takes a few different avenues. We um, obviously want to retain our businesses that we currently have in our downtown. And so we work with them on things like um, needs that they may be facing, shortages that they may be facing. Really, one of the biggest things we've been doing is getting them to talk to their neighbors and, and be a community. And so we host um, opportunities for them to do that, for them to do further training, looking into some grant opportunities we can provide. And then we do business recruitment. So um, we obviously, like I said, want to keep all the businesses we already have in downtown, but um, always great to add a little more variety, um, figure out what the market is looking for and, and add that into downtown too. Um, we have some growing opportunities in our downtown that we're starting to be able to focus a little bit more on, um, which has kind of been a, an evolving part of my role is we have a lot of residents. Um, and so we have 195 residential units in our downtown. And so serving our residents, which is very different than serving our business owners, is sure. a new challenge that we're that we're uh, adapting to and really excited to see what that looks like for, for the people that live in our downtown as well. You know, you mentioned the residents and it's kind of it's kind of interesting for folks who don't know. I mean, I, I did not know until I started doing some things with you guys up there with the Cheerwine Festival and the different events that are going on. The number of folks that actually do live right there in downtown. I mean, they're kind of they're kind of hidden with, uh, you know, some of the businesses and things like that. But uh, certainly an interesting variety uh, in terms of the uh, number of residents and the number of businesses that are right there in that downtown area. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of development over the last really 12 months. I mean, several years, but really the last 12 months has been a big development time for the city, uh, especially with the the way Main Street has changed and, and the flow of traffic and all that. Have you seen positives from that? or have you, I mean, I can't imagine you've seen many negatives from that change. Yeah, so we have seen a lot of positives. We're really excited because it's, and it sounds counterintuitive, it may upset some people on their commute to work, but it slowed traffic down. Yes. Um, speed limit through downtown is 20 miles an hour, and um, it is very easy to pick that up a little bit as you go through. Um, but slowing traffic down means, one, it's it's safer. It's safer for the people walking. It's safer for people crossing the street. Um, safer for delivery trucks that are in there and other vehicles. Um but really what it does, too, is it has shown um, that it encourages people to look at the sides, like as you're driving and see what's there. And it, it makes people stop and actually recognize they're in a community that has businesses and residential units, but really the businesses on the ground level. Um, Salisbury is a Main Street community. We actually have been we were one of the first five Main Street communities in the state um, started in 1980. And uh, they do a lot of the state level and the national level do a lot of studies and the slower traffic and the the safer it is for pedestrians, the better it is for businesses. So really exciting that that traffic flow has worked out for us um, and, and definitely continuing to see how we can improve pedestrian safety and amenities. So people aren't just, you know, driving right through town, but they're driving, they're stopping, they're walking, biking. Definitely. You know, there's, uh, of course, the social district aspect that's coming into play now. Uh, how's that worked out so far for the city? It's been awesome. I um, <laughs> I started in December of 2021, and I think I was here maybe three weeks when they said, all right, first big project, let's get a social district. And I was like, all right, I'm going to write an ordinance, and people are going to be walking around with alcohol. This is, um, is going to be interesting. And yeah. We were somewhat fortunate in that Kannapolis had started theirs like two days after the state approved it. Um, and so we saw what they were doing and and um, saw that they really weren't having any issues. It made it a little easier for us as we were planning. And I was able to work really closely with a number of organizations, both inside and outside of the city, to make sure that we were really keeping public safety at top of mind. And so a lot of planning and communication went into that social district and it, it really is paid off. Our businesses, we have uh, 18 bars and restaurants who are able to sell drinks to go. Um, and they all, every single one of them has reported an increase in sales that they can attribute to the social district. Um, and we've had zero public safety incidences, which is the most important thing to me. Our 
Um, police chief, we've had two during the time that the social district has been open, but Chief Smith currently, um, his team does a great job of working with us and making sure the businesses are educated. Um, but like I said, it's increased business. Um, it's kind of given people another avenue. We see it a lot at the park with concerts um, and special events that we have there. People are using it responsibly, but they're using it heavily. Um, and to have all of those positives without any of the negatives of any safety issues is is, is exactly what you want. Absolutely. One of the things I've seen just personally from myself coming into, into downtown and everything is the, you know, you go back prior to the social district and it, it even though there were businesses that were open at night and there was a nightlife there, it was almost non-existent compared to how it is now with the fact that folks are more aware of, Hey, I can go down there and, you know, check out things going on at night. And also, you know, if I want to have a little drink to sip on while walking around, especially on these hot evenings that we're going to have coming up yes. over the next couple of months, it's a, it's a great thing to see. And certainly there's definitely been some growth there. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as the growth goes, you're able to really kind of give an idea of how much growth you've seen in the in the short period of time with the social district. I don't have a, a specific number for you in terms of um, like percentage of growth, like with sales particularly, right. um, because you know we want to give them a, a nice range so they're yep. not giving all their <laughs> all their business details out. But, Absolutely. Um, we did start with just 12 businesses and we've grown to 18. So that's just it, July 1st will be two years. So in two years, wow. we're, we're increasing the number of people who are selling those drinks. Mm -hmm. We actually had one business um, who, com not completely, but they even adjusted their business model for it. So mm -hmm. bike store and um, it's now Skinny Wheels, Pedals and Pints because mm -hmm. they decided they were going to be able to sell alcohol as well. Um, especially with their proximity to the park. I think that was a fantastic move. Um, yes. But we've also seen, like I said, the the number of businesses increase, which has been fantastic. And um, a lot of people say it's the flexibility of the social districts um, that has enabled them to kind of use that as an alternative business model, um, adding it to what they were already doing. Well, we're coming off the heels of the Cheerwine Festival. And then, of course, the uh, Pops at the Pooh, or, well, I guess it still pops at the post, even though it takes place at the park now. Yes, uh, yeah. and, and both of those events seem to go really well. Weather certainly had a, a late day impact on the Cheerwine Festival, but pops at the post was able to go on with no issues at all from weather. Yeah. Uh, but certainly there are plenty of events that are coming up. I know you mentioned that some that were in the works. So if you want to share something, some of those events that you got coming up, the, especially as we start to really get into the heat of summer now. Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, summer's heating up, the events are heating up in downtown. Um, some of them, the city just is glad they're happening in downtown, glad to support them by attending. Um, one is Pride Festival. We have that this Saturday. Um, so that's coming up. But then the other thing I mentioned at the beginning is we're really encouraging our businesses to work together and to kind of band together as a community to um, to leverage the fact that we have mm -hmm hundreds if not thousands of people in our downtown every weekend send them to your neighbor and so one of the ways they have done this um is by uh they did it last year for the first time they're doing where's waldo in july so where's waldo is coming again it'll start july 1st and that is an opportunity for kids and adults alike um certainly no discrimination there to hunt for waldo in a bunch of our downtown businesses uh, any of the businesses that are participating will be able to give you kind of the sheet that starts you off. But uh, last year, it was so fun to watch so many kids look for Waldo in all these different stores. And we find, we found last year, um, and we hope that it continues this year, is that it really introduces people to a lot of our businesses in downtown. Rather than um, going to the one store they know is there or the one restaurant they knew they wanted to eat, um, they're able to go explore a lot of different places and you have all month to do it. So if you can't find Waldo in every location, um, just on one day, you can spread it out throughout the month. Um, and Alyssa Redmond at South Main Book Company is is the one who coordinated with kind of the bigger Waldo organization because one exists. And um, she's uh, she'll be able to answer a lot of those questions for you. But July 1st, where's Waldo in downtown? So really exciting, goes through the whole month of July. Uh, and then later in July, this is another one, our businesses have really done a great job of, of spearheading and it's had different iterations throughout the years, but we have crazy clearance. 
So yes. that is uh, third week in July. Um, and of course, the dates are escaping me as soon as I'm on here and, and have to be able to share them. But third week in July, it's Wednesday through Saturday. And uh, we just have a lot of different businesses who will have great sidewalk sales. Um, and to get a little escape from the AC, a lot of them will have deals on stuff inside as well. Mm -hmm. And so they are really looking forward to putting that on, inviting people downtown um, and making sure that uh, you're able to kind of heat up with summer by having some really hot deals. Um, and that is July 17th through the 20th. Um, so looking forward to that as well. Um, our friends at Parks and Recreation Department have made sure that we have a lot of opportunities for um, people to be in downtown and at the park. And so we are doing a Reels and Riffs series again this year. So we've got a movie coming up on the 28th that is going to be Super Mario Brothers at the park. And then next month's movie in July is uh, The Little Mermaid, The New Little Mermaid. Yes. So very exciting. <laughs> and then we have two concerts coming up too. We'll have one in July um, and one in August. And the August one, really exciting, is Josh Sanders from Kannapolis who just oh, yeah. on The Voice. So really nice. excited to, to be welcoming someone local back into the community. Um, so yeah, that takes us really through end of August. We celebrate... Mm -hmm. uh, hard to believe because you know it's still june but back to school we have yep. a special event for our college students in in august and we'll welcome them back with college night out um and that is august 22nd um but really we round out our summer series in september with our hispanic heritage month festival and you know i was thinking we only have a few events but it, we keep ourselves busy with all those that i just listed yeah, absolutely. You certainly do. So I wanted to take a step back from what so you mentioned Pride, the Pride event coming up this weekend, yeah. this Saturday. I did want to point out to folks, certainly a heat wave happens to be starting Saturday for us. Yes. So if you're going to be out at the event, and I certainly encourage you to do that, just make sure you're drinking and you know, water and staying hydrated. Uh, you know, certainly take advantage of the social district aspect of it, but make sure to offset that with some water as well, because you can certainly say, dehydrate yourself even more. <laughs> please make sure there's water involved in that. And we have a lot of great um, partners I know at the city um, will be handing things out to help people stay cool. I am sure yes. there will be other vendors doing the same thing because, yes, it is going to be warm. And we certainly encourage that for any of our summer events. Please make sure you are hydrating, you are getting some AC. Yes. Sit it down if you need to. That's we have a water wall at the park. Yeah. Take full advantage of it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You so you mentioned the Where's Waldo. The first thing I thought about was I, I remember back uh, a couple of years ago when Pokemon Go became like a huge, I mean it was it exploded onto the yep. scene. And I remember going through Salisbury there, and you would see just hordes of kids running around the city yes. looking for yeah. these Pokemon. And that was one of the things I thought about was like, man, you know, if, if some of these businesses around here could kind of capture that opportunity, that's something to, to latch on to. So it's neat to hear that you're doing the Where's Waldo thing, which I know you did last year and it was a big deal. And certainly glad to see that coming back. And yeah. it's also fun to see that something as old as Waldo still attracts kids today. <laughs> I love it. I really love it because I, like I grew up reading those books and yeah. searching for Waldo on every single page. And um it, it's it's great that it's still something that, and I mentioned we don't discriminate it's kids and adults alike because yeah. that's really what it turns into. Um, yeah. It's funny you'll I'll be in a store and you'll see parents come in and they're trying not to show their kids where Waldo is so they can <laughs> find it themselves. So it's really fun. A competition on all age levels. <laughs> oh yes. So uh, along with the events that are going on, you know, obviously you, you, you know, we talked about the development. And I talked about some of the growth that we've seen really in the last 12 months, especially right along that Main Street area. Um, you know, at one time there was talk, and I'm, I'm sure it's still there, that you're still not done with that. There's still things to come uh, in that, especially right in the middle of the street, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, we are um, in the process of doing a Main Street design project. And so uh, hard to think back, especially pre-pandemic these days, but um, right before the pandemic, um, so it was before I worked for the city, uh, there was a very large engagement effort. Um, and they got thousands of, uh, of perspectives 
on what the sidewalks and, and the street needed to look like. And so the first phase of that was the restriping that you mentioned, where we went from two lanes in both directions to one lane in both directions with a turning lane down the center. Slowed traffic down a little bit, uh, made it a little safer for people. But the next phase of that, we are about 75% of the way done our construction drawings. And um, we will be doing construction. Um, it will not start until 2025. Um, certainly don't want anyone to think that we are undertaking huge construction projects without ample notice, um, yeah. but with uh, construction drawings, it just takes a long time. So we had to start that earlier. Yes. Um, but really what we're looking at is um, improving, and I, I alluded to this, some pedestrian amenities. So yeah. making it a little easier for people to eat on the sidewalk, um, have some outdoor dining, have some benches. Um, one of the huge hits that we had at Cheerwine Festival was a water 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 bottle refilling stations, yes. um, SRU, um, looking at incorporating those in our in our new design, and just doing a little refresh on our landscaping. Um, one of the things I had no experience in, didn't know much about, but of course it makes sense is that um, trees and plants in a downtown really don't have a very long life cycle because they're constantly. Um, being exposed to fumes and to exhaust, um, to people constantly being around them. Um, but they also just don't have quite as much room to grow in the tree pit. And so we're at a point in our life cycle with our trees where we're looking at refreshing some of our, um, our landscaping as well. And then the big things for safety are improving our, our lights and our lighting. So making sure that not only the street level lighting is improved, uh, but making sure that pedestrian level lighting um, is adequate and, and really more than adequate for people to feel safe at all times during the day. Well, that, I can't wait to see it all unfold. I know, like you mentioned, a lot of folks get, uh, and, and I certainly understand that they get a little concerned when you start talking about construction, especially in a small area like that, Absolutely. because they start thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to wreck my commute for months. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, yeah, so I certainly understand that, but it's going to be great to see this project, you know, completely unfold. Uh, you know, the city is just really looking more and more amazing as, as time goes on, certainly. I uh, wanted to wrap up. I always ask my guests three questions that have nothing to do with our topic in general, okay. just something to kind of break up the monotony. So the first one is, if you could choose any superpower, what would it be? Oh, man, if I could choose, I don't know if this is a superpower more than just a, a wish, but I wish that I could eat and never be full. <laughs> there you go. Because I love trying new restaurants and new recipes yeah. and all of that. Um, and, you know, if I didn't have to stop eating, it would be much easier. <laughs> yes, I understand that. Well, that could certainly be a superpower because I consider superpowers anything that's extraordinary that the regular person can't do. So I don't yes. know of anyone yeah. that can... Yeah, perfect. Uh, the the second one is um, if you could pick any day, or, well, if you could pick a, a day that would be a me day for you to where you don't have to do anything but what you want to do, what does your me day look like? Um, so a little bit of what I just mentioned, certainly eating some good food. I yeah. love, like I said, restaurant <laughs> or cooking at home. I love doing it. But yeah. I also love reading. Um, and so, and especially reading outside. So if I could have like a nice quiet place where I am able to just pick up a good book, um, the Rowan Public Library and South Main Book Company are probably two of my most visited places. Um, if I could have a, a nice day where I could curl up with my, my book and my dogs and my husband, that's a good day for me. There you go. And the last one, it kind of kind of ties into two things you've already kind of mentioned in a way. So you mentioned food. Uh, and so this one is if you can only have one specific kind of food or dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, man. I, I know if that I makes it tough all... on you because you like the variety. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. the thing. But if I could yeah. get all nutritional value I needed, yeah. um, it would be ice cream. Oh, easily, there you go. Easily ice cream. I, yeah. uh, it's funny. I, one of our, my husband and I, our favorite things to do, uh, if, if we're not busy, he coaches baseball and, you know, I, so we're both busy, but one of our things to do is, um, visit other downtowns too, to, you know, yeah. 
get a little inspiration, see what they have, yeah. see what Salisbury needs. Um, but we always try a coffee shop and an ice cream place because those are two good marks of a good community. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Two of my favorite things in the in 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 the world is ice cream and coffee. So <laughs> Yep. And we are lucky in Salisbury, we have fantastic shops yes. for both of them. Absolutely. Well, before we wrap up, so, uh, you know, you mentioned the the South Main Book Company and, and the public library. My daughter, huge reader herself. She loves yeah. doing all that kind of stuff. Um, what would you say is your must read book of the summer? I know this is a, an extra question I'm adding on, but, if you, uh, you know, I just kind of like to hear about folks and what they like to read. So what would be your must read book of this coming summer? So it, it's it may, it may be cheating because it's technically yeah. not out yet. It comes out yeah. on the 25th, but Christy Woodson Harvey, who is a Salisbury yeah. native, has yeah. a brand new book coming out. And it is just being highly regarded by everyone. And so I have pre-ordered my book and I cannot wait nice. to read it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Seda, thank you so much for joining us. I certainly look forward to all the events coming up in, in, the, in the downtown area over the next couple of months and certainly the changes that are coming next year as well. Uh, it's certainly going to be great to see it all unfold. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Absolutely.